And then we will continue in worship with our scripture reading. Taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, and his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Friends, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So when a quartet is doing it right, uh, and they hit a certain chord, uh, it rings, doesn't it? It rings, it resonates. You hear the overtone series in that chord, and that only happens when all four people in the quartet are offering what they have to offer fully, like giving it, like singing their faces off, and and singing it so locked in together that it just, it just rings, right? That means each person has to claim their voice and share it in, in, with confidence and at the very same time uh, yield, give themselves to the greater chord, to the chord itself, right? To be a part of the chord. They can't stick out. Like, the worst thing you can say to a member of a quartet is, I heard you singing up there, you know. That's not what you're supposed to hear. You're supposed to hear the chord as a whole. And it only happens when every singer is giving themselves fully for the sake of that chord. There's so many musical, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Analogies. as a musician that I really appreciate, and that's one of them. Another one happens when you're listening to a good jazz combo play. When you're listening to a good jazz combo play and they get in this groove, you can tell that they're in the groove together. Most of the time, a jazz combo will have a rhythm section that includes a bass and a drum set and maybe like a, another rhythm instrument. So, um, so you'd have a bass person that would be laying down the bass. a bass player, but it would sound something like that. Like they're laying down this line that gives the harmony and the rhythm and the tempo and everything. And then you have the drum player playing on top of it. Whatever that would be. Probably that. And then um, you have like another rhythm instrument that could provide some harmony like a piano or a guitar. uh, So you'd layer that in. Apparently, you have to make that face, too, because that always, <laughs> jazz players always have to, looks like they're, they're in a little bit of pain when they are got the groove, groove going on. But that's the groove, and you give the groove, you, you set the groove so that you can hear the melody, right? So then you have a solo instrument, which may be a harmonica, for example, just saying. We, I, we may be one of the very handful of congregations in the world that had a harmonica in worship, Today, can we give some praise for harmonica praise and worship? Nice. 
But the point of the groove, the point of the groove is not just the groove. The point of the groove is to hear over the top of it something like ba do ba 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 do da da ba do da 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 I'm not, no. I'm not really a jazz musician, which is why I missed one of those chords in the progression, as you probably, John probably was like, oh God, he's off. So <clears throat> I missed the progression, but a good ensemble that's really tight never misses a the progression. They're in the groove. They have, they have the chord changes like as a part of who they are. They have the tempo and the rhythm just ingrained within them. And if they're doing it really well, it may end up sounding something a little bit like these guys do when they, they play, play together. pretty good groove going on since three out of four, four of them are actually related to one another. At the piano in that ensemble is the one and only Ellis Marsalis and two of his sons are playing with him, Delfeo Marsalis on the trombone and Jason on the drums. So they had a groove and you could hear it and you heard the trombone play the melody which sounded vaguely like the melody I tried to do just a second ago um, but way cooler. Uh, and, and then Delfeo started playing some other stuff, some other notes that didn't quite sound exactly like the melody, but the groove kept going, right? So Del Feo on the trombone was able to improvise above the groove because he had something to offer to this moment, to this sound, to this groove. But he had the groove in his heart and mind and he kept it going so that he could offer his gift. A combo is tight when each player is giving what they have to offer to the good of the ensemble as a whole. They know the chords, they know the changes, they know the groove, and each one shares what they have. Each one has something to offer and shares it with generosity. So the church has a groove. We don't call it our groove, but maybe we should. <clears throat> we call it our mission. The church has a groove and we call it our mission. And the way we say it here is our groove is to make a difference for Christ by transforming church and community. 
You should know the groove by heart because if you exit that door after worship, you see it written above that door every time you walk through. Our groove has been laid down by our pretty cool rhythm section of scripture, tradition, reason, and experience who are laying down this groove for us, our mission. Not only do we have a groove, church, we also have instruments that we can use to play along with this groove. We don't call them instruments, we call them our vision. Our vision as a church is how we accomplish our mission. Our instruments in the jazz combo are how we play this groove. We have a vision here that includes loving deeply, worshiping passionately, and serving boldly. Loving Christ deeply, worshiping Christ passionately, serving Christ boldly. This is our vision for ministry at Manchester. And not only does it include those things, the vision also mentions that this is an inclusive vision, that all persons are welcome to jam along with the band, bring their acts, and play, because we've got a cool groove being laid down. I promise the musical metaphors are going to fade away pretty quick, so just stick with me for just a little bit longer. Because I got to say this, the jazz combo doesn't work unless each musician is doing their part. The jazz combo doesn't sound as tight as it does unless, unless each musician is doing their part. The quartet doesn't sound as cool as it does unless, unless each singer is singing their face off. You can, yeah, later on when you use the phrase singing your, their face off, just remember where you heard it. So, we each share what we have to offer. That's generosity, right? That's generosity. Sharing what you have to offer. And that's the last practice in this Doers of the Word series that we're going to focus on today. Giving. Generosity. Today's scripture says that generous giving results in God's blessing. The reading started out, the point is this. And just as a side note, if you're ever reading the Bible <laughs> and you come to the phrase, the point is this, you probably ought to highlight what comes next. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. We have that cliche in our language, you reap what you sow, right? It comes from right here. This passage goes on to talk about God's blessing this way. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us for the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. And this is not the only place in the scripture where it indicates that if you give generously, you will be blessed by God. Blessing is a tricky word in the Bible because there is an interpretation of this passage and other passages like this that has led to a prevalent understanding of Scripture that is known as the prosperity gospel. And one of the things the prosperity gospel says is that um, this blessing that the Bible talks about is actually a material blessing. Like if you give with generosity, you're going to receive a similar kind of thing, whether that be, you know, a, a monetary blessing, uh, you know, a cool house, the, a bigger TV, the latest iPhone, which does like one more thing than your previous version did, and you got to have it for some reason, right? So this blessing in the prosperity gospel is preached as though God's blessing is a material gift only. If we will give, God will bless us materially. Not only does the prosperity gospel claim that God's blessing is material, it also claims that it is God's will for you to be blessed with material wealth. And so it's good for you to have stuff. Now, uh, that's an interpretation and just for full disclosure, it's not the interpretation that I have about what blessing really is. I do believe that a generous heart will be blessed by God. I 100% believe that. But I have a different idea of what blessing looks like. And it actually comes from this same scripture passage that Jim read just a second ago. In verse 8 of that passage, if you still have your Bibles out, you can open there. In verse 8, we read, God will bless you so that... By always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. 
Another phrase to pay attention to when you're reading scripture is so that. If you come across a so that in the Bible, it links what came before to what comes after. Yes, God will bless you. And why will God bless you? God will bless you so that you, by always having enough of everything, not, not too much of everything, not, not enough of everything, not uh, coming out your ears, but enough so that you will have enough of everything. You may be able to share abundantly in every good work. In other words, the blessing of God that you is that you have something to offer. And that as you offer it with selfless and abundant generosity, you are a part of creating something beautiful, something beyond what you could create on your own, something bigger than you. The blessing of abundant generosity is to become a part of something beyond what you could do on your own. I know what you're thinking. I do. I know exactly what you're thinking right now. Andy, this is about money, isn't it? <laughs> it's fall, and so I know the money sermon is coming. I know, I get it. Andy, this is about money, isn't it? Well, let me answer you this way. Yes. I mean, let's just be honest. How could it not be, right? How could it not be? Um, yes, and. Yes, and. This is about a generous heart. And a generous heart does not make a distinction among different kinds of generosity. A generous heart doesn't make a distinction between financial generosity and generosity with your time or with your energy or with your talents. A generous heart is either a generous heart or not. A generous heart. A doer of the word has a generous heart. And I gotta say, generous hearts are very inconvenient. <laughs> generous hearts tend to ache for the needs of others. Generous hearts tend to break over and over and over again for the things that break the heart of God. Generous hearts tend to ache when we see a hurricane approaching the coast and are so scared for the people who are in its path, wondering what we can do to help. Generous hearts tend to ache for a community affected by a mass shooting, the random violence, the grief, the questions. Generous hearts tend to ache and wonder what we can give, what we can share, what we can do. Generous hearts tend to ache when we hear about 57 kids who would be hungry over a weekend if they didn't get a little bit of food. Generous hearts are very inconvenient, aren't they? And yet, a doer of the word, a follower of Jesus Christ, a child of God has a generous heart. Because the truth is, we have been given so very much Everything that we have, everything that we are, everything that we have ever been, everything that we will ever be, it's not ours. It's a gift given by God. And in gratitude for the gift, in gratitude for the giver, our giving should be a given. Not out of compulsion, not out of obligation, but it's because of who we are. That's what the scripture mean when it means when it says God loves a cheerful giver. Not because you have to, but because it's who you are. A person with a generous heart who gives because it's just your identity. Because you have something to offer. You have something to share. You have a melody to, to, to sing, to play, to give, to offer to this amazingly cool jazz combo that is grooving at Manchester United Methodist Church. I happen to know, I happen to have heard the groove that Manchester United Methodist Church is grooving with, and I think it's pretty cool. Has anybody heard it? I've only been here for two months, and I've heard it. This is a cool groove that this congregation is laying down, and y'all got something to offer to it. Each and every one of us has a melody to add to this groove. 
We have a tight rhythm section, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and they are laying down an amazing groove. If you need help figuring out what your instrument is, what your voice is, if you think you don't have something to offer to this groove and are wondering how you can find it, pay attention to that question and call one of our amazing pastors here at Manchester and ask them to pray with you about what that might be because you have something. Each and every person in this room has something. We have so many ways to help people discern their spiritual gifts that they can contribute to the groove of Manchester United Methodist Church. And once you do discover it, once you do figure out what it is, don't hold it back. Don't hold it back. Join in the song. Make your giving a given. And you will find that as you do with your oh-so-inconvenient, generous heart. If you offer what you have, if you share what God has given to you, you will indeed be blessed. We are blessed in becoming a part of something that is bigger than us. We are blessed in, in having enough and in sharing what we have to be a part of something that transcends our experience and that is beyond what we could ever do by ourselves. And just as we individually come to share what we have, we come to this table that is so much more than just this one table in this one room. As we share in Holy Communion, we become a part of something that transcends us, that is bigger than us. That this table is Christ's table, and it is open to all the world, all who would come and receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, the simple act of sharing in bread and juice, a tangible reminder that we are together more than we could ever be on our own. We know we are created by God in the divine image. We are created to be in relationship with one another, to love and to be loved. And we know that we screw that up often through no fault of our own or sometimes through fault of our own. We don't get that right. And yet when we come back to God asking for forgiveness, we find that God's grace is there for us over and over and over again. And we know that in this moment we remember that that good news was so important to God that Jesus came into this world to embody it, to teach it, to share it, and to show each one of us the fullness of God's love. 